people that the greatest boxer of all times, Muhammad Ali, died because of Parkinsonism. You see, he was a heavyweight champion for 10 years and you very well know the fact that boxing, especially the professional boxing, where they're going to box without protective headgear, the blows to the side of the head can really be nasty and that could result in development of microscopic bleeds in the basal ganglia, which will accumulate over time and can contribute to features of Parkinsonism. Hi guys, this is Dr. Marwa. Good to see you guys back. I shall be today talking about approach to a patient of Parkinson's disease. I have already introduced myself to the patient, taken the consent for a detailed neurological examination and taken care of the hand hygiene component already. We shall now be talking about the detailed examination of the patient. There are four components that I need to demonstrate. Bradykinesia, tremors, rigidity, gait and balance issues and I'm going to break them down one by one. This 20 years old male came to us with a history of anorectal abscess two years back. Right, and for that anorectal abscess, incision and drainage was done. After two to three weeks of surgery, from the site of incision, patients started complaining of seropurulent discharge. Apart from seropurulent discharge, there was pain also. And I asked the patient whether there is passage of feces and flatus from that external opening. This external opening is there in perianal region. And patient says that sir, there is no passage of feces and flatus. Now, if you see this current scenario, what you are going to understand, three important points. First, patient was having anorectal abscess, incision and drainage was done and from the site of incision, there is seropurulent discharge. It means this is a clear cut case of fistula in ano. So, we have a patient here and this patient came with complaint of few lesions which started developing over his legs and these lesions were present on both the legs and they were very itchy lesions now i am going to show you these lesions you can keep your feet here so this patient came with complaint of lot of itching over these lesions and gradually these lesions are progressively increasing and they are persisting for a very long period like many months or many years and uh, if you see these lesions closely, you will find that the skin is very dry. At places, there is hyperpigmentation. You can see this darkening of the skin. And the skin is having increased markings. If you see, normally skin have markings. But here you can see these markings are very prominent. Okay. So, these three changes which I told you. The first one, that is the skin is very thick. If you feel it. If you palpate it, this is very thick skin, so there is hypertrophy. Second thing is, there is increased surface markings. So, you can see the markings are very prominent here and at places there are cracks also due to these prominent markings. And third thing is, there are pigmentary changes because the skin is appearing dark in color. So, if you find these three changes in any lesion, that lesion is known as lichenified lesion. So, this lesion is a lichenified lesion and this lichenified lesion is a lesion of eczema. Now, you might be wondering that eczema have oozing out lesions. Okay, there is a fluid which is coming out from the lesion in eczema that is actually in acute eczema but this is what this is chronic eczema now chronic eczema presents with lichenified lesions okay so what is lichenification as i told you the skin when you palpate it is very thick so there is hypertrophy at places if you see there are increased markings and you can see that the skin is dark in color in comparison to this normal skin if you see here this is dark in color so there are pigmentary changes so this is a lichenified lesion of chronic eczema which is persisting for many months now we will try to mark the important landmarks which we will be using for the different measurements so starting from the right in the center of the body when i look at the center of the body and i go start going from the lower part of the abdomen right in the midline i will come to a point right where i will feel a bony resistance on the lowermost part of the ziphy sternum and I will put a mark there. So whenever we mark any bony landmark, there are two ways. Feel resistance or feel the ROS. So here we have got going from down to up, we have tried to feel the resistance. We can always going from the top and come down and there's a loss of resistance. So feel and loss are the two important things that one should keep in mind. Second is the umbilicus, which we don't need to mark. It is right in the center. The next point that an examiner can ask you for marking is the anterior superior iliac spine. As a rule, always mark both anterior superior iliac spine. So how do we do it? First of all, we should know what exactly is an intramuscular injection. As you know, intramuscular injection is where the medication or the vaccine is deposited directly into the muscle 
Now, what are the common sites for intramuscular injection? The universal site which is used mostly is deltoid muscle. Also remember, earlier in children, we used to give intramuscular injections in the buttocks because we know gluteus maximus is the largest, thickest muscle of the body and it has very good dense capillary network which helped in the absorption of vaccine to a very great extent. But then we started realizing the problem or the flip side. What was the flip side? Gluteus maximus muscle also has a lot of fat and it impedes or reduces the absorption of all the T-series of vaccines that is DPT, Hepatitis B, etc. Also, there is a theoretical chance of damaging the sciatic nerve. So, this site was subsequently banned to be used for giving an intramuscular injection in infants and young children and now we have shifted to another muscle in young infants so that these problems could be avoided that is the muscle with little amount of fat that is vastus lateralis anterolateral aspect of thigh middle one third this is a 40 year old farmer who presented with complaints of palpitations and breathing difficulty while at a public protest there's no past history of any cardiac complaints or syncopal episodes sudden cardiac death and there's a lot of paraphernalia which is attached but i would like to now focus on the actual footage of the patient let's look at what the patient was actually going through just look at that. I mean, you can see the prominent neck pulsations. You can notice the fluttering of the neck veins occurring in this patient. And we had to actually hook up this patient to a monitor to see what was going on with the heart of this guy so that we could decipher the changes in the JVP of the patient. At the first look, we definitely noticed a very characteristic frog sign. Now, let me explain what it really means and why was this happening in this patient. 